We all know the feeling. You just start running right after you've done some high intensity functional movements and it feels super hard. You cannot maintain your usual pace from before. Well, at Adidas headquarters, we collected some new data from elite CrossFit and Hyrox athletes to better understand this whole effect of compromised running. And in this video, I will dive deep into the exact tests we did and into the data behind it. At the end, I will provide you some unique insights that I think can help you to better structure your own training, being it in functional fitness overall, CrossFit, but also Hyrox. All right, let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology. And now my goal is to bring some of that science back to you guys. So let's say you have two athletes, right? They're both running at 14 kilometers an hour, just below threshold or a decent pace. And one is consuming 40 milliliters of oxygen per minute. And the other one is consuming whatever, 55 milliliters of oxygen per minute. This means that even though they're running at the same speed, athlete B will be less efficient. His running economy is lower because basically running economy is the amount of oxygen you're using at a given speed. Running economy is very important in specifically the sport of high rocks, but also in CrossFit because more and more running is actually incorporated in CrossFit competitions at the highest level, but that's also at the lower level. So the question is, okay, but how is this running economy, this amount of uh, oxygen consumption per speed, per given uh, intensity, how is this uh, affected? By which factors is this affected? And there has been a lot of, let's say, research uh, about this because obviously this is a very important parameter in endurance sports. We talk about metabolic efficiency, your training background, biomechanics, super important, neuromuscular efficiency, and cardiorespiratory uh, efficiency. Obviously, we're not going to go through all these details here. The goal of this video is to better understand how functional movements in elite CrossFit and Hyrox athletes affect this running economy because you could understand that if you do for example wall balls or lunges or deadlifts right before a run your muscles will be fatigued locally right and there will also be some blood redistribution from the let's say overall all the muscles towards these very specific muscles that are uh, used during lunges or during wall balls like for example the glutes and the quads so obviously at adidas headquarters they have a lot of experience in understanding and measuring running economy both from a more physiological perspective, such as the amount of oxygen they're using at a given speed, as I just explained, but also the biomechanics. They can really detail your biomechanics and understand which factors affect this running economy. So as I already talked about in my previous video about this Adidas series, we had an athlete primer. This was in the winter of 2025, some months ago, where a lot of athletes signed by Adidas came into the Adidas headquarters in Germany, the center of Germany, and we had them run a couple of tests. And one of those tests was a functional fitness test to exhaustion to really understand better their physiology. I made a video about this test and how this was all uh, done before. So click the video that is popping up right now if you are interested in that one. But we also did on the same day a more biomechanics running efficiency test. And what exactly did we do to better understand this running economy? In the CrossFit athletes, we had them do a six minute sub maximal run that is really well established at Adidas headquarters. And with that, we measured their biomechanics as well as their oxygen uptake and other physiological parameters. And then, right after that six minute run, like almost straight after, we did 2159 classic CrossFit, obviously, of deadlifts and forward lunges at moderate weights for them. It took them four to five minutes that workout. And then they went straight into another sub maximal run. What is our goal? To understand, okay, how much is the physiology of the run affected by the functional movements? For the hierarchies, we did exactly the same test, but not a 2159 as functional movements. We did a 100 meter front rack lunges also at pretty submaximal weight. So that was our idea about the test. And as I said, the question was, okay, how is their oxygen uptake affected by these functional movements? And then the data become super cool. I'm just gonna show you two case studies, one from CrossFit and the other one is from Hyrox. And here you can see the oxygen uptake from before, which is the gray, the gray dots, as well as 
post, which is after the functional movements. Remember, 21, 59 of deadlift and lunges, so pretty lower body specific focused workout. And what is very clearly visible here is that uh, if you took the last two minutes of both the first run and the last uh, run, the oxygen uptake is 12.5% higher in the second run compared to the first run. So again, this means that even though they're running at the same speed, the CrossFit athlete is becoming much less efficient in the usage of oxygen because obviously the speed is the same and the oxygen consumption is much higher. A classical example of how fatigue can influence your running economy. Very important for CrossFit workouts, but also for high rocks workouts. Let's dive a little bit more or deeper into that data. We also assess the oxygen uptake during the functional movements. And what is super interesting is that he had exactly, and that's also across all the other athletes, he had exactly the same oxygen uptake during the submaximal run, which was close to his threshold for him, approximately 40 ml of oxygen per minute per kilogram body weight. And then during the functional movements, also exactly 40 Point three, Quite interesting, because you would think that there's more intensity, more powerful movements in the functional movement, so that's also why his oxygen uptake goes up, right? Not necessarily. When we look at the substrate utilization or the relative contribution of carbohydrates or fat to the energy demand, this is something we can assess via respiratory exchange ratio or RER. And very simple, that is the amount of carbon dioxide that is exhaled compared to or ratioed over the amount of oxygen that is taken up. And when it is at when that ratio is at 0.7, you are 100% burning fats. For example, now I'm sitting making this video, it's going to be close to 0.7. But when the intensity goes up, also the RER goes up because the body wants to have the most efficient energy sources. Then it goes to 0.85, that's going to be 50-50 fats and carbs. 1.0 is going to be 100% carbs. There's been many studies showing that when you do a CrossFit workout, you are sitting at 1 to 1.15 of RER, and that means that you're 100% burning carbohydrates. I've talked about this a lot in previous videos, and that's also why CrossFit specifically is a very glycolytic sport. And then we go above this one, 1.1, 1.2 even, this means that there is an anaerobic component to energy provision, right? Everything below one is predominantly aerobic. Everything above one is that there's also shows that there's also a, a large part of the energy production is coming from anaerobic sources. And then it gets super interesting because how is the RER during our run as well as our functional movements? During the run, it's pretty clear that we are sitting just below or creeping towards 1.0 because it's a continuous movement and also we picked the speed 11.5 to 12 kilometers an hour for those uh, runners that was close to their threshold so we didn't want to push them in the an anaerobic zone but then we didn't give them any instructions in the functional movement we just said go hard and you saw that they actually went hard because of the RER the RER is at 1.2 even 1.25 at some point right the last two minutes it was at 1.18 this means that even though the VO2 was 40 so the same as the run, the energy that was needed to actually do all the movements came for a large part from anaerobic sources. Pretty fascinating to see that the nature of the movements, continuous versus more powerful, is also affecting how the energy is produced, right? Aerobic or anaerobic. And this is very clear in this data. That's a crossfitter, right? They don't run that much. It's not a secret. I mean, also those those people here, they were not uh, super well-established endurance runners. That's for sure. They were really good at burpees and thrusters and all that stuff. But running was not certainly not their absolute forte. But then we also tested a Hyrox Elite 15 racer. And for him, clearly running is very important. And what you see here is, again, pre and post, before and after the functional movements, in this case, it was 100 meter of lunges. And now you see already much less difference between the pre-oxygen consumption and the post-oxygen consumption. Only 4.4% difference. And this is only one athlete or one case study. But in general, this was the trend that the CrossFit athletes were a bit less efficient 
the second run compared to the first run, and this difference was much less in the Hirox athletes. Kind of what you would expect, but also pretty nicely visible in this data. So this means that even though he did a lot of lunges, this, this Hirox athlete was actually not really fatigued, and he could still uh, run in a very efficient way. We don't have the biomechanics yet, but at least on the physiology side, this was, was clearly the case. So let's look at the RER, right? Because the RER is this substrate utilization parameter. And here you see almost exactly the same as in the CrossFitter during the run. He's uh, sitting at a pretty low RER in the beginning, and then it creeps up towards 0.9, 0.95. So he was better aerobically conditioned because he was running at, I think, 14.5 to 15 kilometers an hour and this was still below his running threshold kind of what you expect but that's that's clearly also a difference between Hirox and the crossfitters and then if you look at his RER doing the functional movements also here this was less into the anaerobic zone you cannot perfectly combine both workouts because one was also much higher in weights, the CrossFit workout, compared to the Hyrox workout. The Hyrox workout was just pretty light lunges for a, a, a long time, like six minutes in total. So that you cannot really uh, compare too much. But still, these uh, lunges did not really affect or at least to a very little extent, only 4%, his running economy from a physiological uh, side. And that's exactly what you also see in previous studies. So there has been one study published about Hyrox, and what they showed here is that the lactate, right, the lactate in the body, the systemic lactate, was significantly higher after a station, after, for example, the lunges, the sled pushes, and the wall balls. There, the lactate was higher than right after every run, every 1K run during Hyrox event. Kind of what you expect, because the functional movements, the stations are much more anaerobic in nature, certainly the heavy ones. And that's clearly also uh, what you see in our data as well as the published data related to that. So the question now is, and, and, and I think it's important to understand, is why is this happening? Why do you become less efficient in your second run compared to the first run before the functional movements? And then, I have been really researching a lot about this because I think it's pretty fascinating. I mean, you can have three main reasons. One is going to be blood distribution, the blood flow. Second one is going to be acidosis. I will get to that. And the third one is oxygen utilization. Let me go quickly go through all these different factors and try to explain how you can also use that in your training. So if you do lunges or wall balls or something heavy on the lower body, for example, most of the blood will shift towards one or two specific muscle groups, right? And it can be that the stabilizers, the smaller muscles in your lower body, receive less blood, and therefore you have, on the biomechanical side of things, actually a less efficient foot strike or a less, less efficient running pattern. Good? So that's a very clear effect of this immediate blood flow redistribution. On the second part, you have acidosis, right? Like, what is acidosis? It's basically a decrease in pH of the muscle environment. And what we know is that when you do powerful movements, for example, CrossFit workouts or the lunges or the wall balls in an high box uh, event, you're going to have a lot of ATP hydrolysis and a lot of protons that are associated with the anaerobic metabolism that get pushed into the muscle microenvironment, like everything around and inside the muscle fibers. And we know that a low pH is actually affecting or disrupting the enzyme function of the oxidative metabolism. It makes your mitochondria less efficient. So it means that you need more oxygen for the same amount of ATP or energy production. Pretty fascinating to see that pure fatigue can actually affect your mitochondrial efficiency. And that's almost exactly what we saw in the data that I just showed you. And then the third one, which is kind of related to that, is that when you are fatigued or when you do high-intensity powerful movements, you will reduce the efficiency of oxygen extraction. And that's something we can assess with NIRS or with near infrared spectroscopy. There have been studies showing that the patterns of saturation and desaturation during fatiguing leg extension movements have been altered when the muscle is fatigued. And this shows or this infers that there's more oxygen debt at the end 
of your contractions when you are getting fatigued and this could lead to less efficient oxygen extraction and therefore also you become just less uh, efficient in utilizing all the oxygen that is provided. So to have the same speed or the same contraction um, efficiency, you need more oxygen. Exactly what we showed here. Pretty fascinating stuff if you ask me. At Adidas headquarters, we were able to assess running economy from a physiology point of view in elite CrossFit and Hyrox racers. And what we saw is that indeed running economy is reduced after functional movements, high intensity functional movements. And it looks like the, the more fatiguing the protocol is, for example, heavy thrusters, heavy deadlift lunges and so on, the more the running economy will be affected. There's many factors that could have a, a strong influence on running economy. But if you look at it from a more functional perspective in the sport of CrossFit and Hyrox, it's gonna be definitely blood redistribution. All the blood is going towards the big muscles. The smaller stabilizers kind of get omitted and therefore the running economy or the running efficiency breaks down. Acidosis, local reduction, in the pH of your muscle and also of your blood, this means that you will be less efficient, that your mitochondria will become less efficient. And also shown by, by nurse in other studies that when you are fatigued, there's a less efficient way of extracting the oxygen that is delivered towards the muscles. The next video, part three of the video, will then explain together with the biomechanics team how this affected, how this functional movement actually affected the actual biomechanics of the running. For example, how the hip turned or how the knee coughed and how this could affect or contribute to reduction in run, running economy. Definitely stay tuned for that. So how can you implement some of these findings, some of these observations into your own training? What we do with our boat, our Hyrox engine, as well as our Hyrox speed and power programs, we first have a long training block where you just do running. So no compromised running. I see a lot of people, and also CrossFit gyms, high rocks gyms, implementing too early in the cycles compromised running. When people are not good and not efficient in running per se, implementing compromised running will just fully decrease their um, running economy and will simply shift the focus away from the right things building volume, building aerobic capacity compared to just hanging on for dear life and, and, and struggling through the workout. That's exactly what you see in a lot of people. So that's that's something to take into account. Second, you can kind of test this, right? Test this for yourself. Now you have a lot of apps on the market that can assess pretty roughly probably and not state of the art, but at least it gives you a good idea about your running biomechanics. So what you can do is simply uh, repeat the test what we did. Here is you do a running biomechanics test with this app and then you uh, implement a heavy workout in between four to five minutes. Don't make it too long, make it hard and intense and then reassess your running biomechanics and then better understand via according also the data of the app, which parameters are mostly affected in your running stride and try to also improve that. And thirdly, and that's something I didn't really mention uh, yet, is implementing a lot of running drills and plyometrics into your training. Because it has been shown that running efficiency is both affected by the stiffness of your tendons, right, the rebound effect of your tendons, and neuromuscular efficiency, which is affected by plyometrics as well as strength training. So that's also why in our programs related to high rocks, but also uh, CrossFit, we focus a lot on uh, compound movements and also getting stronger overall to improve your running economy. All right, that was it from my part today. If you want to see in a bit more detail on how we tackle training for both Hyrox and functional fitness uh, CrossFit, how we try to implement the latest scientific findings into our programs, scan the QR code that is popping up right now. You definitely support the channel with that and also get fit along the way. So it's a win-win for everyone. If you want to learn more about the first test we did at Adidas headquarters, simply click the link that is popping up right now. See you in the next one. Ciao.